What's up enthusiasts, it's your boy Rob back with another video. Guys, today we're gonna be taking a look at how you, if you are a beginner, can get started with tabletop wargaming. Now, this is a vast, vast community of people that you can turn to to question and ask what could be uh, the game that's correct for you. But if, let's just take a random scenario, say, there's a young man out there or a woman that has recently played a game. They've stumbled across, you know, their local hobby store. They've walked inside and they saw these tables in the back and they're like, oh my God, what's going down over there? They walk up and they see people pushing little miniature figurines across the table. They're painted to perfection and it all just looks so captivating. Now, What's the next step that person's obviously going to take is diving into it. And where should they start? I'm happy you asked. So guys, I've got my little list here and I'm going to just kind of ramble off how you would get started. Now, I know there are plenty of videos about this very so topic, but we're gonna throw it from my angle and uh, let you guys know now that I have hindsight, how I would have even approached the hobby so many years ago had I known better and had I had uh, YouTube to get me really uh, well versed in the hobby. Now, obviously YouTube was around, but I think just at that time you were just really watching a bunch of like, you know, ha 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 funny videos um, of animals doing random things and, and a few other things beyond that. But it just wasn't really anything out there to say, okay, this is the best first step. This is the next best step. And obviously this is my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt, no pun intended. But I think one thing is important to say that our hobby is and can be expensive uh, depending on the route you take. I'm going to teach you how to get into this hobby for a very inexpensive, in a, a very low threshold of cost. Um, so, I think the first place that anybody should start when they're jumping into tabletop wargaming is the rules. Now, you may have found a set of rules that have already caught your eye, but let's just say you've seen miniatures from a distance, you've seen the game going down from a distance, you didn't get a chance to get the name, but you know you wanna play whatever this thing is. So there are quite a few options out there, but we're gonna take that young gentleman that doesn't have much money to spend, maybe he's not 100% certain that this is the road he wants to go down, but he does want to dip his toe, his pinky toe, into the pool of wargaming. So I would suggest any of these budget titles, which would be one page rules, which is something I've got right here on my desk I've been reading up on lately. And it's a very uh, small rule book. And I think you can get it from Wargame Vault for about $4, $5, um, and they have a free version of it that has like the just the very core rules to the game more than enough to get you started I think that's a very good option we've got songs of blades and heroes which is a personal favorite of mine um, I came across this game I'd say midway of me being into the hobby but it is a definitely a fun game to play if you've got an opponent it's not necessarily made for solo but the game does lend well to it if you have to play solo. So definitely check out Advance or Advance Song of Blade and Heroes at this point. Uh, and these those are gonna be two. Let's see, one page rules. Regardless of what you're into, they're gonna have something to uh, that something to float your boat. They've got sci-fi, they've got fantasy, and they've got your rank and file game. They've got your skirmish levels, and then they've kind of got your big battle games as well. So that will get you covered there. Um, over at uh, Advanced Song of Blades and Heroes and Andre Spigoli, if that's how you pronounce his name, it's probably not, but he's got a bunch of games that you can kind of look into depending on what you're into. And they all, I believe they all use the uh, Song of Blades and Heroes core mechanics. So that would be an easy transition from one uh, genre to the other if you're planning on going that route. Now, if you wanna do something modern combat, um, you can look at Battle Space, which is the game I wrote, you know, give myself a little plug there. A very 
very simplistic game that you can get into. You don't need necessarily a ton of figures, but uh, you will need, I'd say, about a good 20 models to kind of get you up and running. Uh, for those other two sets, if you're looking at just playing Skirmish, again, you could probably get away with between 5 to 10 models um, would get you going, and that'd be more than enough, I believe, to really fill out the game and see if that's what you want to do. So, what models are you guys going to go get? That's the thing. Now, me coming up into the hobby, the best way to have gotten models back then was to just buy, like, your D&D board game, and that's exactly what I did. I um, I think I bought, like, one or two, like, it's called, like, Dark Heaven, Dark Haven um, miniatures. I think that's, like, produced by Reaper at the time. But I bought one of those guys. It was metal. I painted him the first time. I didn't even prime him. I didn't. This is see. This is why I'm making the video. I didn't even prime that model. I just slapped some paint on him. And like a day or two later, when the paint was chipping off, I was trying to figure out what was going on. See, so we live and we learn. And guys, I'm going to learn you guys right now. So, guys, I think with so many options right now that you have, it's the perfect time to get into the hobby. You've got 3D printing. You've got uh, Etsy models. You've got a bunch of loose models you can buy on the secondhand market as well. So you've got plenty of options to buy models. I think I, I still love Reaper Miniatures in their Bones line. I know a lot of people have uh, been giving it some slack lately um, because I guess the quality is hit or miss. I, I love the models. In fact, I want to make a video on it uh, touching why I love um some of the sculpts by I think his name's Bobby Jackson and how it reminds me of um, what's his name uh, Frank Pizzetta and they just kind of they have like a, a likeness to Frank Pizzetta's art and I, and I freaking love that guys so before I continue to ramble on about that um, models I think you should go to eBay and check out some secondhand models there if not eBay go over to um, let's see cool stuff dot ink and they will have singles that you can buy for like pennies on the dollar i mean you can get a model that was that will probably cost you about four to six seven dollars new you could probably get it for about a dollar and some change so definitely if you especially if you're doing fantasy you can go there they've got plenty of models from the whiz kids D, D line and the older stuff that's all pre-painted so if you don't even want to paint that's the perfect way to go if you do want to get into painting uh, excuse me painting we're going to kind of talk about that as well but um definitely look into etsy if you do want to paint your models there's plenty of models that are 3d printed i'm assuming if you're starting out in the hobby you won't have a 3d printer maybe you do but if you don't go over to etsy you'll find some really creative models uh, for a really good price and you can probably buy an army or two for less than 20 less than 30 bucks not a problem there um, another source I like to say is again on eBay um, I was just browsing a little while uh, a few days ago actually and I came across the um, frost graves miniature boxes they've got guys on eBay selling uh, individual sprues and you're paying like four or five dollars a sprue now you cannot beat that because a box I believe a box normally can you can build about 20 models so what you can do is when you get that sprue 20 or 25 I think it might be 25 models maybe even 30 but a sprue typically can give you about five guys roughly um, and they're selling per sprue so that's if you don't necessarily want a big army you're a skirmisher you're trying to get into skirmishing games and you only want about four or five models to put on the table you can buy you know two different sprues so you've got a good a good team and a bad team and they can face off each against each other and that's can be the start excuse me guys to building your army i need to take a drink don't worry it's just a good old arnold palmer in there all right guys so now that we've got our models we've got our rules as well what's going to be next let's say you're going to be painting your models i know a lot of people will tell you to run out and go get the you know the citadel paints or get the p3 paints if that's still popular that was popular back in the day when i was kind of into the hobby early on guys i'm going to tell you noobs to go get 
some craft paint from the craft store. I know, I know, I hear so many veteran players right now yelling at me saying, Rob, what are you telling these people to go do? You're giving them bad advice. No, it's not bad advice because if you're new to the hobby, most likely nine times out of 10, your painting ability is going to be trash. All right, guys, you're going to have to put in some hours before you become a decent painter. And even after you put in many and many hours, you may still suck. Look at your boy right here. Guys, I've been painting models for quite some time. I'm saying maybe 12 years now, maybe approaching even 15 at this point. And I'm still not happy with the quality that I paint at. Now, clearly, my focus is mainly on rules and just enjoying the hobby. Um, so painting is kind of on the back burner for me. And I typically buy a lot of pre-painted stuff. So that's how that's my little scapegoat there. But again, if you're going to paint models and you're starting off in this hobby, go run to the craft store like your Hobby Lobby or whatever you have in your area and pick up some of this. Um, let, let's see. It was like Apple Barrel, uh, Craft Smart, uh, Folk Art um, bottles of paint. Now, what you want to do is make sure you don't get the matte uh, finish. They've got like a matte finish that you, which you will generally see, and that will usually be the cheapest bottles. You want to get the gloss. And why? Because it's going to have a much nicer finish. Now, I know a lot of people think, no, nah, you don't want to have a gloss finish. You really do when you can't paint well, because that matte finish is going to be very, that paint with the matte finish is going to be very difficult to work with. You're going to have a very chalky looking result um, after painting the model. And that's even if you use some sort of varnish. So definitely go get a gloss paint finish, uh, craft paint, acrylic paint, acrylic paint, guys. Let, let's make sure we get that right. And uh, you should be OK. Thin your paints down a little bit with water. Uh, nothing too crazy. Make sure you get some primer. I would suggest getting Krylon. Uh, now, if you're going to be getting some 3D models from or 3D printed models from Etsy, you definitely want to use your Krylon paint or spray to prime your models. Guys, I can't say that you can apply paint directly to a resin model. I've never tried it before, so it may or may not work. It may resin may take paint well for all I know. If you're going with the bones miniature line, they come essentially pre-primed um, or the plastic that they're, they're made out of is it takes paint well at least to um, it with with uh, what I've done with the models in the past my experiences with them all right so guys we've got our rules we've got our models so and we're all, right now guys I bet we've probably spent less than 50 bucks I mean we've got some you know maybe eight dollars at the most rules We've gone on to eBay. We've bought the rules. For, we've bought the models from eBay. We're buying the, let's just say we're going to go with the sprues. We're going to buy two sprues. We're going to buy those two sprues. And let's just say that's another 20 bucks. So we're at like less than 30 bucks right now. Guys, we're going to go buy the paint brushes and the hobby paints from the hobby store. And we're going to, those paints are normally about a dollar a bottle. And a paintbrush, you can get a very good pack of paintbrushes for maybe $4. Because uh, all you need to do is use two or three out of that uh, pack. So if you even want to, you can just splurge and get the one really nice paintbrush. I wouldn't suggest that. I would definitely get a pack with about at least four brushes in it because you're going to be going through them. You're going to get paint all inside of the like the little housing thing that holds the. the I can't talk right now. The, the actual brush. So guys. What do we need next after that? So we need terrain. That terrain is going to round our uh, hobby experience off. So for terrain, what do you want to do? Now, terrain can come from anywhere. But let's just say you're not much of a crafter. And if you're not much of a crafter, why are you buying models you need to paint? I don't know. But yeah, you just want to live your life on the edge sometimes. But you want to be able to set your table up quick, right? So I'm going to tell you guys my top secret place to go get the best terrain for a reasonable price. Not free, reasonable price. I'll give you a free option right after this. Now, guys, my secret place I love to go to to go get terrain is the pet store. Yes, the pet store. Guys at the pet store, they've got all types of uh, in things that you would put 
inside of your uh, animal tanks. So especially like for like lizards, you've got like different rocks and stuff like that, rock formations. Matter of fact, guys, let me show you one piece I pulled from the uh, the store, the pet store, for less than twenty bucks. So let's, I'm gonna turn around real quick. Let's see here. It is right here. So perfect, perfect example here. Here, I'm going to grab this little Space Marine here. Ugh. All right, so Space Marine, just to kind of give you guys a size reference, there you go. So that looks about right. If he was on the ground, he'd be like right here. If you could see that, yeah, you can see that. All right, guys, so perfect example there of what you would be getting if you went to the pet store, spent less than 20 bucks. Um, you can get a lot smaller things. They've got little shacks and stuff like that. And you can get out of there with spending about 30 bucks as well for maybe your table, the, the pieces, your set pieces. That's what I would call that. It's a set piece. This is going to maybe be in the center of my table, especially if I'm just starting out. Again, here it is. There it is. A bada bing, a bada boom. That's your set piece. When you're starting out, you set that in the center of the table to block line of sight. And you are good as gold. Now, if you are playing maybe modern and you're like, okay, I don't need a lot of rock structures. I need buildings. Guys, there are multiple sources out there for paper craft. And I would not turn a blind eye to paper craft. Uh, I, I've definitely done it in the past. In fact, I've got a... Uh, a tavern on i think that's on war game vault maybe rpg drive uh, drive through rpg but basically it's like a little tavern it's paper craft you fold it you can actually put models on inside of it it's got tiles on the inside as well it's all paper it's all printed you can print it black and white um and i think it's less than like a dollar maybe but there are plenty of other sources on um drive through rpg and war games vault as well for the paper craft buildings and I would not hesitate from checking that out. I think that'll be one of your cheapest options for getting terrain and getting a lot of terrain on your table. Because once you start playing, you're going to want to actually be able to add terrain and you're going to want to use different terrain bits and features for, you know, every other game. Because you can, terrain can get old quick, even if you're playing with the same army for the most part. You want to be able to change up your scenery because because then you could play through a scenario. You know, you've got the same core group and they're playing they're you know, they're fighting their way through the wasteland. Then if you're pulling out the same bits of terrain, you kind of lose that that allure of the setting as well. So definitely, guys, check out uh, some paper craft terrain. Um, battle system is another one that's going to be a little pricier. When I say a little, I mean a lot. You're going to be spending nearly one hundred dollars for a good amount of terrain. But uh, with those options, the pet store and the paper craft, that should be more than enough to get you up and running. If you're going with the paper craft, you're going to spend maybe four or five dollars for that. You could possibly even buy a bundle for about ten dollars. And guys, that would be a table full of uh, terrain that you can print out. You've got your models that you've spent less than, I'd say, ten dollars for maybe twenty dollars for two armies, two small skirmish armies, that is. You've got your rules for less than five dollars. If you're going with um, you're going with Songs of Blaze and Heroes, I think their rule books are about eight dollars as well. So you're still well, I'd say under fifty dollars, guys. Um, and that's how I want to help you guys. That's a great way to get started if you are new to this hobby. Now all you got to do is sit down, get those models painted, because no one wants to play with unpainted models. That is a sin in my book, guys. All right, that's the video today. I hope you'd enjoy it. Guys, I'll see you again next time. And uh, remember, like, subscribe, and all that good YouTube stuff. And if you haven't checked out any of my games, go check them out.